Welcome to Smooth Moves, Yoga with Bliss. Why do I call it Smooth Moves? Because we start every practice with a warm-up. Most of the people in my class are, like me, a little bit older. Warming up our joints, our muscles, tendons, and ligaments makes the practice of yoga safer and more uh, flexibility. So, I use a little rhythmic limbering, so I add a little rhythmic music. You're wearing something comfortable. You have someplace soft carpet mat. Do you have yoga blocks? Do you lean up against a wall during some of this? Or the back of a couch? Do you use the kitchen counter for some? Or the seat of a couch? Have what you need. Stand in your mountain. Are your feet right together? Are your feet right under your hips? You choose. Breathe and be. Center your posture. Pelvic tilt. Sternum lift. Shoulders down low. Chin tight. That's your fabulous posture. As you step out, you will keep it as you shift. I'm just going to take a smile just to see diagnostically how are my shoulders, how's my back. <sighs> now I'm going to take one hand at a time with a big smooth move, a big swoop right here. Let's take it up, breathe deeply. Out front, chest tight right here. Beautiful form, you guys. Take it up right there. And now take a moment, center yourself, and side to side. Let's take one hand for an upside down rainbow. Oh, I should call it a smile right here. How about the other hand right here? Seeing how each shoulder feels as you move. You're way up tall. You haven't leaned forward. So your body is checking out as that rotation in the spine feel. Shoulder, neck. How about this side? Here. So the smooth moves, yes, it's rhythmic limbering, but it's also a little diagnostic. Think of this shoulder, how does it feel as you reach? Notice I reach out in front of me, not right up over my head, out front just a little bit. All this rocking side to side is warming up our thighs. The body's tall. Now stand here, touch your heel, squeeze your shoulder blades together, and now think out front and touch your toe. Feel the little rotation doubles, it'll fit better to the music. Here's two, and two. Now, you know, as I look at my monitor, you can't see that I'm squeezing my inner thighs because there's a little gap there. That's fine. Everybody's fine. Just squeeze the inner thigh. Two more. Change your arms. Here, there, to the side, and we're out. Are you breathing here? Doubles now, two. Look at my legs. My heels are in. My knees are out. Take the rotation in your spine. Take it up right here and up. 
Now we go down. Do you just go to your hip height, stretching through the neck? Do you lean down, beginning to work through the glutes and the back? Do you go lower, beginning to have your flexibility? Stretch it out. Whatever works for you, take it here and there. Two more, and we'll slowly work our way back up. Right there. Two more. And take a lift. You know, I just heard a little noise by my foot. I couldn't figure out what it was. Stand tall. Find your mountain. Feel your pelvic tilt, your sternum lift. Well, this chapstick just fell right out of my bra. And that was because it was reminding me that I'm supposed to, got your mountain going on, turn off my phone so nobody calls us. Little bitty me lifts. Here. I'll find the pace right there. And little me lifts. Maybe you like to do a great big me lift. See what your body wants. High arm. Low arms. See what your body says is right today. Tall, wide, best posture. Give it a little turn. Keep that pelvic tilt. Flat back. How's that feel? Rounded back. Which one is right for you? Your arms come forward. Open out. But when you come up, you keep your pelvic tilt, no back bend. Nice tall spine here and there. Come tall to the center. You got your pelvic tilt, you feel that nice tall spine. There is my flat back. Some days that feels best. Here is the rounded back. What's right for you? your body says you can do some of one and some of the other open out stretch that chest release down stretch that back four last times right there <sighs> center up it's almost like a goddess on the move we'll reach four then chest height four here. How about hip height? Here's four. If your body says it's okay, go lower. Here's four. Back to hip height now. Four. And back way up tall if you want. If your shoulders say that's okay, smile. Here. I just went a little wider and I'm reaching way out because my back is just loving the work today. If your back is tender, you can give yourself a little back massage with everything in a little closer. What's right for you? Just four last smiles. How about rainbows? Big rainbows? Or little bitty small rainbows? Smile now. Big or small, you choose it. Rainbow your way for here. The goal is to get yourself breathing a little more. You have awakened your cardiovascular capabilities because during our practice, you need all the oxygen you can get here. Your muscles, tendons underneath, ligaments, oh, they should be all warmed up. One last over the top right here. And then we're gonna do a movement that is like a chair. Do you put your feet right together and press your knees together? Do you leave your feet under your hips and press your knees a little together? Here's a chair, flat back. See that nice flat back? Your chair is not like that. No, no, it's here. Little pulse, down. Yes, I am pressing my arms together. That's just where mine go. Yours might press together totally straight behind you here. And you got that chest shining up. Take your arms out now, right there. Beautiful. 
Here we are. Now keep your arms up or down, or maybe they're here. Down right now, here it is. Are you breathing? Out front right here, flat back. Oh, you're working to hold the weight of your arms. Come up right here. Yes, your chair might be deeper than mine is. Come on with a shoulder roll and find yourself in whatever stance is comfortable to you. Right now you should be feeling one of the body's miracles, your cooling process. You're all warmed up. You might have the slightest dampness on your upper lip, on your chest. Good, let's take that warm body. Here's the goddess. No, everybody's goddess is different. Your shoulders might like your goddess to be right down here. See those energetic hands? Or maybe your elbows are right level across. Let's think about your bottom half. Do you like your goddess to be way low? Or maybe your goddess is right with slightly bent. Whatever it is, let's take it. Pulse four down now right here. How are you? Stretch up, unlock knees, down for a pulsing goddess, up for a pulsing star, here. Now we'll do three goddess and one star. And there's your star, it's three, two, one, and star right here is three. How's your neck? Keep it loose. We're working those shoulders, thighs, butt. Got your pelvic tilt. You're working your abs one last time. Here's three. Here. And one last up and hold that star. Feel your knees. They're long legs, but not locked. Beautiful. Unlock those knees. Here's your hands right behind you. Open up your chest. Open up your rib cage. Feel your back flat. Keep that flat back. Now, do you want blocks right here? They would be fine. You may come with your blocks. Flat back. Breathe. Chest shines up. And then whenever the time is right for you. Now, many people that go flat back, they have to round. If that's you, right here, you've got your flat back. You go to a chair or an ottoman or the seat of your couch. Breathe. So here we are. Wide leg, flat back, long. Now listen to your body. As you exhale, let your elbows bend and just feel yourself stretch down a little more. You may lower your blocks. You may not use your blocks. It's your hang down a little more. No, I did not just do this so I could pick up that lint that was driving me crazy that came onto my mat. <laughs> so you're right there on the chair, the block, relax, hang, bent knees. Your back does round over now. Now when you come up, double check your bent knees, come up, check your flat back, come up, oh that's a power lift as you come up, and come right here, stretch up those legs and you're right back into a star, let's do that as a flow, bend the legs, find the shined up chest flat back, you choose your blocks, your chair, the floor, we're flat for a few moments, then we round down to whatever place is right for you. Your knees are bent when we're rounded down. Keep your knees bent. Find your flat back. Bring yourself up into a goddess. Stretch yourself up into a star. Do you feel it? These slow moves are building heat. Let's, whoops, goddess. Bent legs. Keep those legs bent. Flat back. Shine that chest up. Lean a little. You might lean this much. Might be perfect. Take your hands.
hands right there on the chair. Oh, yes, love your body. Right wherever is right for you. Now round yourself down to your lowest. Round down, release down, whether you're on a chair, on a block, on the floor. We have bent legs still. Rounded back. Breathing. Keep those legs bent as you come up to a flat back from wherever you were and back to goddess and with control back to the star. Oh, you're fabulous. I'm going to take my arms down. I went, I went through the center to pamper my shoulders and then I'm just going to come up with a shoulder roll a little at a time until my body is just all myself together. Are you breathing? <sighs> Take a moment, find your mountain. I had to dry off my face. So nice. Well, I'm going to start with a few balances. You did a beautiful stretch out. Let's do a balance. A customized warrior three. You face me. I'm turning sideways. And the customized warrior three goes like this. You're on your railroad tracks. Your knees are just unlocked. You step back with this foot on the railroad track, ball of your foot there for a balanced root. And then you lean and see what's the depth for you. Some people lean all the way parallel to the floor. Some people lean just a little. You choose it. Take your hands. Do you like them tucked in, outreached, way out? So this is one potential customized warrior three. Here is another potential customized warrior three. And you do anywhere in between these that you would like. When you're done with your warrior three, Pull yourself together, and we're going to do a tree. For your tree, pour your weight onto one leg. Get it comfortable, your feet, your knees, your hips. Find, oh, that's a balance root. That's our customization. Reduce your balance root coming closer. That makes it more intense to balance. Does your balance root come all the way in? Do you place your leg on your calf, on your thigh? Do you fall over as I did? That's all right. Everybody's a good body, and you find your balanced place. Now, let me tell you, choose your arms. You don't want to keep falling over. You want to find a place where you wobble, but you don't fall down. That is the place where your brain and your body are literally rewiring, growing new dendrites. I'm not kidding. Rewiring for better balance. Fabulous. Now, we're doing this all on this same side so far. We did a three. We did a tree. And now I'm doing a pelican. Are you ready? Weights all on that same foot. Best posture you ever had. Level pelvis, sternum, shoulders. No, no hanging out to the side. Level, you got it. Now, for your, I'll show you a side view for the pelican. For your pelican, do you like your foot with a balance root toe right on the ground? And that'll help you balance. These are pelican wings. Do you like your foot way up? See what works for you. Very nice. And come on down. I need a few shoulder rolls just to loosen up the tension that built when we balanced. Now this side. Here we are. For the Warrior Three, you're on your railroad tracks. See my railroad tracks are just a little distance. You find the back foot, the foot that did not go back before. That's the foot that goes right there ball of the foot on the railroad track. See how it keeps your balance? Nice. Now, flat back, chest shine forward. Do you want to 
Lean a little. Do you want to lean a whole bunch? I don't know. Do what you need. Do you like your hands tucked in? Extend it. Up. Lift it. Now mine are a little wider because that's best for my neck and shoulders. You might have your hands right together. Straight armed. Your body. Your way. Did you lean and pick up your foot and your leg? That's not available to me, but you do. What's available to you? You challenge yourself, yet accept yourself. When you're ready, you pull yourself together. Find yourself up tall, because we have a tree coming up. Here we have this foot. Now I will tell you, this is my knee that may or may not get replaced. And so sometimes it, it uh, will give out. You listen to what I say, not what I do. Here we have the weight on the leg with spread toes, unlocked, stable posture, and find your balance root. Oh yeah, find something to stare at. I'm staring at a speck on my screen because I can see my posture in my peripheral vision. That's my balance root. Now if I stay right here, it's too easy. I'm not getting any balance challenge. So I'll come closer till I find the place where I wobble, but I don't fall down. On this side, my leg must stay on the ground, but yours could go to your calf or to your thigh, never your knee. Find your branches. What, what's right for you? Are you just almost losing your balance? That's the wobble. My kids used to call this the weeble workout. You wobble, but you don't fall down. Your tree, your way, breathing. Now when you're ready, go one level more intense. Maybe pick up one little bit. And when you lose your balance from that, that's when you are done. Very nice. I gotta have some shoulder rolls. So we did a three, we did a tree. Here's our pelican. Find your weight on the lake that you were not on before when you did your pelican. Are you breathing? My toe is gonna to stay on the ground on this side because it helps my challenged knee. You do what you want. Lift that leg up if you can. Oh, I can't resist for a moment. There's a pelican. There you go. Your pelican your way. Come on down. I want to just go wide for a minute and give our bodies just a swoop. I'm gonna put those three together with breath and a flow, a little balance vinyasa. We're gonna start out with a pelican, a tree, and a three. Smooth on each side. Make them little the first time. Here we are. Pelican. Okay, good, that was little. I know I can do it. Here we have the other side. Pelican. Tree. Three. Okay, we're doing it again. Give yourself a little more time in each so that you can make the pose deeper if you choose. Pelican, just your way. Tree, as intense as you choose. Three, flat back, just right for you. The chest, the arms, the leg. What have you chosen? Come on up. One last making it just perfectly customized. Center up, that's your mountain. Pelican. How high should your knee be? Tree. How close should your balance root be? Here's your 
is your warrior three. Make it just right for yourself. Lower that upper body if you choose. Lift that leg if you choose. Fly your warrior three if it's available to you. Love whatever your body will give you. And pull yourself together. Shoulder rolls. Fabulous. I gotta have some pelvic tilts here. Goddess. Pelvic tilt. Release. Pelvic tilt. I'll show you side view. But goddess is up tall. Pelvic tilt. Tipped. Release. Tip. Release. Nice, smoothly. I was doing it with a jerk and I heard my back crunch. So I'm gonna go more smoothly. And there we go. Pelvic tilt and release. Okay, now here we are, just standing in your mountain. Find your best foot position, your best hips. Pelvic tilt, release. Pelvic tilt. Release, pelvic tilt, one last time, pelvic tilt, beautiful. Well, here we are, how about a little sun salutation, A. Eh? We're all warmed up, I do need my blocks. I do my down dog and my plank on blocks. Do you do your down dog and plank on the seat of the couch or a very, very sturdy chair? or the kitchen counter or a very sturdy couch. So you've got whatever you're going to use based on what your wrist, shoulders, back, what your body needs, mountain. <sighs> Relax that neck, feel your most excellent spine. Comes in on the lumbar spine, lift the sternum, pull your shoulder blades down and back and breathe. Forward fold. Now, if you have a round belly as I do, to do my forward fold, instead of leaving my feet together, I take them a little apart. Look, now I have room for my belly to exist as I do my forward fold. Please, forward fold your way. Should you hold the chair, hands to the chair, to a high block or low block. or whatever stretch is right for you. Now, this first sun salutation, I'm putting all sorts of things in. For this one, we're hanging down here. Diane, be careful of your wrist. Do this very mellowly, but we're going to Press the palms down on your block or your chair. And if your wrist will go flat with a 90 degrees, that's where you're heading eventually in a few years after your surgery. But for right now, you might have cupcake hands and just feel a little bit of bending in the wrist. Fingers were forward. All right, let's go sideways. Here we are. A little bit of bending in the wrist if that's okay for you. So each person uh, doing their wrist bends. We did forward. We did outside fingers. Here's inside fingers. Yes, many things in your shoulders, arms, wrists. Now, your wrist may be barely bent at all, but if it's right for you, enjoy it. Maybe your wrist will come on to more bend. Are you breathing? And then finally, I just turned so you could see my fingertips go toward the back. When I first started doing this, this was it. My wrists would not bend at all. And then gradually over time, with acceptance and intention, my wrists bent. And now, oh. Now, whatever hang down you like, you want to hug your elbows and hang down, if you want to dangle it, it's your hang down your way. Well, now I did say hug elbows, didn't I? 
By the way, you can come up if you need to for a few moments and then join us back down. Here we are hanging. One hand is below your best hang down. Relax your head down. Breathing. Now put the other arm underneath for symmetry. Hang. Okay, what about those three flat backs? Adjust your stance to be just right for your feet, knees, hamstrings. The flat back means you lift in your spine. Exhale down. Second lift from the spine, right by the waistband. Come on down, that's your L4, L5. Here we are, low back muscles building. Next we have a down dog coming up. What do you need for your down dog? Are you on the counter, on a chair? Do you have, look at this one. This is a short dog. I have less weight on my hands. You can do a short dog on any surface. Or you may go back and have your heels up for my body in order to accommodate the needs of my feet I do flat heels flat heels is the full expression of the pose you intend for your heels to come close to the ground now what's your plank I'm going to show you a half plank with great care so you don't bang your knees, you set your knees down, walk them back, keeping your shoulders over your wrists, and find your plank, like a flat plank, from your knees to the back of your head. There's your plank, your way, is it a full plank? Be with it, then push right up into your down dog, any way that you can. Be with it again. Breathing. Exhaling. Now I see the space between my hands. You might need to bend your knees a whole bunch and just walk up and walk back till you find yourself in a forward fold. You may be able to fling a leg back and hop there. Everybody's different. Everybody's fine. Here's our three, flat back, exhale down, flat back, exhale down, last one, exhale down. Are you coming up with a flat back or rounding up? Make a choice, I will show flat back first. And here we are, to the sun salutation. Well, that was a stretch out for the back of our bodies. Breathing. <sighs> Here's another one with a, a little more flow to it. Breathe the way that your body needs. I'll do some audible breathing as a suggestion. <sighs> Forward fold. body needs. When you're there, we're going to walk the dog. Press one heel down, letting one leg bend at a time. Remember, you might be up on the kitchen counter. You might be on the third stair of a stairway. You might have your hands on the seat of a couch. Make your down dog go for a walk with wellness and comfort, not jeopardy and pain. Yoga should feel good. Everybody is a good body. What type of plank is right for you? Do you want your half plank? Do you 
want your full plank. Pay attention to your neck. Don't look up. Neutral neck. When you're ready, push back to your down dog. If your arms are fatigued, try a short dog where you have weight on your hands, but just not so much. Your down dog, your way. Breathing. Are you ready to walk your feet up any way that works for you? Find yourself in your forward fold. Exhaling. Breathing and centering yourself. Now for me, as a 200 pound person, this is very aerobic. So I breathe, I don't want to feel self-conscious about breathing. If I sound like a freight train, fabulous, I'm doing aerobic yoga, what do I care? Listen to your body, breathe where you need to. When you're centered with your breath and you're ready for your three flat back lifts, that's where I add some breath awareness. So here's an exhale to get started. Oh. Inhale up, exhale down. Inhale up. Last one. And are you ready to come up? This time I'm gonna show rolling up. Unlock your knees, tuck your tailbone, roll up one vertebrae at a time, and then do this wonderful double shoulder roll to your mountain. Very nice. I gotta step around a little. I just need to, oh yeah. Breathe, move any way you want. I'm finding, oh, you know what is the best, best in the world? It's just a regular old baby wipe. I left one on my makeup table once and it dried. A dried baby wipe is the most fabulous pocket hanky or mid yoga class dry off. <sighs> there you are with your mountain. Won't it be nice to get down to the ground? If you have challenges getting down to the ground, you could go down onto your bed, maybe even onto a couch, depending on what it looks like. So I'm gonna start out with a table, but I'm gonna do a standing table. Here I am, mountain. See those bend in the white stripes? That's an unlocked knee, flat back, to a standing table. I want my feet right under my hips, unlocked knees, hands right under my shoulders. There it is, cat cow. Even if you could do a table on the ground, the standing table is pretty darn interesting. If you want more hamstring stretch, lower yourself. Oh, flat back. Here's your exhale on the cat. Inhale, exhale on the cat. Inhale when your chest opens up, cow. Exhale on the cat. Fabulous. Now, any way you want to, we're going to a table that will be on the ground. If you have wrist issues or challenges, let your forearms take your weight so you lower slowly and carefully till you find your table on the ground. I have this block here because during my yoga training, I actually broke my arm, not in yoga, in a construction site I was managing. And I, ever since I broke my arm, I find my wrist of my broken hand really appreciates a block instead of the ground. So here's our table. Oh, I gotta leave room because I'm doing one of Diane's favorites. If I don't do this, she's so wonderful, she'll put it in her own practice right there in class. Here's your table with an exhale, cat. Inhale, cat. You feel centered? Exhale, cat. Everything's where you need it. Inhale, cat. Pour 
all your weight onto one leg, the leg that's farthest from your screen. Go ahead, take the other leg, touching the ground. See that flexed foot? That helps keep your energy from uh, your chi from limping out on you. Keeps it centered and circulating. Find your leg lifted to where it's right for you. By the way, check this out. You might want to be right here. Press your fingertips together again to keep your chi circulating. And you have a table with no wrist pressure at all. Now let's take this table that turned into a tiger's tail. I'm going to go back to my hand and find the leg that is up, find the arm on the opposite side, and extend. Are you breathing? Are you falling? Welcome to the human race. Neutral neck. Press, see this foot down here that I'm tapping? Press the top of that foot down. That'll help your balance. Come on back. Cat cow. <sighs> Into your cat. Into your cow. Into neutral table. Now the other leg. And I must have a cushion under my tender knee. The other leg takes your weight. Choose where you want your hands to be or your forearms to be. Let your leg lift out. Now, the hand that's opposite of your extended leg, that's the hand that comes out. This foot helps balance. By the way, it might help balance bent like I have it now. Or maybe you like it top of the foot down. Listen to your body, breathing when you're ready, back to your table, for one last cat, one last cow, one last table. Feel your table tall and neutral, breathing and being, and next we have a side plank. For the side plank, I don't use blocks, although I have seen many people do. Here's your table. I'm doing a modified side plank. If you can do a full side plank with both legs long, be my guest. If you know how to do it, here's the place in the practice. See that back leg? It tipped out. This leg is straight down. I've opened up my hips. I've lined up my shoulders, opened up my this shoulder, and stretch upward. Here is a lovely side plank with the foot down. Or is it a side plank with the foot up? Listen to your body and do what's right for you. When you are ready, come down to your table, breathing. And for the other side, first we table it. Exhale into your cat. Inhale into your cow and level out your spine. Keep that level spine. Find your long, tall arm. Find your straight up and down femur. And then open your hip. Turn this back foot for your balance and find what does your shoulder allow? Some days my shoulder will not allow my arm to go all the way up. Sometimes I'll just lift an elbow. Sometimes the whole McGillicuddy. Are you breathing? Are you being? And when you want, leave your foot on the floor or take a flying half plank and pick the foot up if it's available to you. Are you breathing? When you're ready, first the foot, then turn downward, and one last cat cow. You know why I put all these cat cows in? <sighs> Sit yourself down, because I happen to have spinal stenosis and arthritis in the spine. So when I use these muscles around it, it's fabulous. But I also benefit from releasing. 
Do you have a wall behind you? If not, go weasel yourself right up to a wall. Actually, that's good for both Diane and Joanne. <sighs> I don't need a wall, but I have come to love the support I get. As I, here, I've just walked my dimples up to the wall. In my case, of course, this is the support in my studio, but imagine it's a wall. My dimples are there, then I lift up. There, oh, it's cold. There it is, my shoulder blades are on the wall, and then finally the back of my head. My spine has a perfect lumbar curve, perfect thoracic curve, perfect cervical curve. My flexed feet feel good to me. Do you like yours pointed? Are you breathing? See what's right for you. Now you have your centered self with your flat back. For many people, right there is all the stretch you ever need. Just breathe into that. For some people, they lean forward just a tiny bit maybe even using a block for support breathing so you're up tall grooving on the stretch it gives you or you've leaned forward a little or if your body allows you might lean forward more if we're doing the flat back part of it now flat back your way flat back If it's okay with you, you lower a little. Still flat back, so you might be right here, just breathing. Give your body the flat back that's right for you. Now, go ahead and round yourself over. So if you were right up here, and it was, my, my, my muscles stretch a lot, they make a noise in my head. Let's see if I can share it with you. Noise! So if your muscles were stretching out, they've relaxed a little, round yourself forward from whatever position you're in. Let yourself breathe. Turn. 
Oh, it felt good. Do what feels good. And then rounding, relaxing, breathing. Come on up. So we did this with the bent leg. Let's go ahead. Let the leg be out. Now feel it'll be, you'll be able to rotate much more because we're stretching different things. Did you have a flat back and you lean down just a little? Rotate and reach. And then if your body allows you to reach wherever you do, this sits bone stays down on the ground. This leg anchors you. This spine stretches.
competitive person. You just need to get the right competition going. So I've taken my opposite hand on the ribbon. The long ribbon, oh, I gotta show you this. The long ribbon, you might actually put your arm on it and just pull that leg across and let this arm hang out. Now this shoulder, it's nice to stay on the ground for shoulder safety and back safety. Breathing. Now my leg doesn't go down any farther than this if my shoulder's on the ground. I see you all in class, your leg is all the way on the ground, that's fine. We're not competing with each other. We are tuning in to have the most excellent customization. If you look back at this hand, what it gives you is a little stretch in the vertebrae of the neck. Feel a stretch through your ribs, through your pectoral wall, through your outer hip, through your outer thigh. Be with it, love your stretch. Some days I like a pillow or a block under this hand. Today it's feeling nice hanging in the air and stretching out my shoulder. Depends on how your shoulder feels today. Exhale into your most full expression of the stretch. Now when you're ready, before you get up, bend your foot, bend your knee, put your foot on the other knee and come up with a nice protection for your back. And let's do the other side. Do you like to just set your foot down and do your point and flex? Do you like to use a double ribbon so it's, it's even shorter because that's just what's right for the length of your arms, the length of your hamstring? Do you like a single ribbon my arthritis in my hands is not thrilled about holding on to this ribbon. So many days I'll put it on the fleshy part of my arm, not in by your veins, not in by your tendons at your wrist, this little fleshy part and feel just whatever stretch is right for your point and flex. By the way, the ribbon should stay at your heel, not your tender little arch. That arch has that plantar fascia in it. You don't want to crush that by pulling on it a whole bunch. <sighs> now what about the opposite hand gets the ribbon? And you just roll yourself over. This shoulder, it, I feel my shoulder like it's snapping or locking to the ground as this foot rolls over and my spine is twisted like saltwater taffy. If your shoulder is tender, get yourself a pillow or a block and put it right back here so your hand or arm can rest on the pillow or block. Your leg only goes where your body wants it to go. If you look back at this hand, notice your neck stretching. I notice my chest wall, ribs, outer thigh. Oh yes, low back. By the way, you might bend your knee and pull up and like the low back stretch better. See what your body tells you. Again, holding on must making my hand unhappy. So I'll switch to my forearm, make my hand, my hands happier. Breathing. Being. Now when you come up, look right at the screen. I want to show you this. You set your foot down on your knee, engage your pelvic tilt, and come up. This protects your low back as you arise. We're gonna put our hands at the side. Do you put your hands down? Quite frankly, that hurts many things in my upper body. So I let my hands be upward 
unless I'm wanting to stretch them. So you do what's right for you. Listen to your body. You don't ever want to hurt yourself, but you may lean into an inflexibility. Pelvic tilt, and then slide down one leg at a time. Oh, I'm in the perfect spot. Look down at my feet. Do you see how my feet have caught the edge of my mat? You could catch the edge of your rug. It pulls my legs down, just like I used to come around and pull on your legs in class. Breathing. So you're doing whatever's right for you. Do you want a completely relaxed hand, relaxed feet? Or are you giving a little stretch to something? Relax your legs, though. Relax your face. All right, now everybody relax their arms. Here we are with everything released. Shavasana. Oh, put a pillow under your knees if that feels better. For many people it does. Over time, you can put a smaller and smaller pillow. But I'm gonna show you the move that allowed my body to change so that I could lay long. If you bend your knees and put the soles of your feet together and relax your knees outward. Relax. If it's too much pull, get a block or a pillow and put it right under your knee till you have, well, this is pulling your psoas it, you might feel like your low back gets a dull ache. Your psoas is attached to your low back on the inside of your spine. Pulls down through your pelvic girdle and attaches to your thigh bones. <sighs> this is the most passive, relaxing psoas stretch that we have. And it was this exact stretch over the course of about two years that changed my body from a body that could never lay flat without my back killing me. Stay here as long as you want. But whenever it's the right time for you, I'm going to pull one knee up, walk my foot out, pull the other knee up, and go back to my javasana with my long, just stretched psoas. That reclining goddess is precisely the move that elongated my psoas and allowed me to lay flat. It turns out it was really good because a few years after that, I needed to have some MRIs. And whether it hurt me or not, they told me I had to lay just like this. And I was so surprised. It was not all less after 40 years of pain. It was a comfortable, lovely position. So put your pillow under your knees, but enjoy your reclining goddess and appreciate whatever flexibility your body will give you. getting up. Get up any old way you can. But I'm getting up. Because I like to look at you at the end of class. And it's fine if I'm looking at your ceiling because you're laying on the floor. Don't worry about it. And it's fine if you're watching this on YouTube so you know I'm not really looking at you. You know and this isn't romper room where I'm talking to everybody personally. But if you're in class today, or watching uh, and practicing with us on YouTube, here are a few thoughts. Appreciate your body. Thank you. 
make whoever, whatever you believe in. Oh, pat yourself on the back for your fabulous self-care, or on the chest if that feels better, for your shoulders. And then, as in your mind's eye, or actually with your arms, it's as if you're gathering all the good things to you. Find your hands over your heart center with bent wrists or flattened wrists. What do you need? And I want you to know that the light in me sees and honors the light in each of you. Namaste. Thank you so much for practicing with me today. Before our Zoom class started, because people came in right beforehand, I had vowed, even if nobody came, I was going to have my Zoom practice today. But I have to tell you, it's so much better when you're here. And just know, if you're practicing with us on YouTube, you're one of the game. You can always text me. I will have my phone number in the copy below the YouTube video very soon. Take care. I have to come forward to the screen because that's where turn off the recording. Bye guys.